Which is the right major for you, software or biomedical engineering? This is what we will be talking about today, but before we get started, please don't forget to smash the bell and subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future content just like this that are going to lead you to success. Obviously, there's no right or wrong answer when it comes to what our passion is, but a lot of the times that might be an unknown until a later stage in our life. So it's important to understand all the implications that come with choosing a specific major. Software and biomedical engineering are two popular engineering disciplines. And I gotta admit that both seem like attractive majors on paper. But let's dive deeper into the curriculum, job outlook, salary, and prestige to see if these majors are really as attractive as they appear to be so you can make an educated decision for yourself and not have any regrets about dropping 100 grand on the wrong degree after college. Let's start off with an easy question. If you've taken algebra, geometry, calculus, and linear algebra in high school, try to remember if you enjoyed solving math problems. If your answer is yes and designing social media programs, web pages like YouTube, as well as programs that make your computer and smartphone function properly, then software engineering is likely right for you. On the flip side, if you enjoy physics in general, including mechanics and electricity and magnetism, as well as chemistry, biology, and anatomy class in high school, specifically the content related to molecules, cells, tissue, and organ systems of the human body, then biomedical engineering is likely right for you. Again, this is just a preliminary evaluation to at least point you in the right direction of either of the two engineering disciplines. Now, in order to determine if software or biomedical engineering is a better fit for you, we must first know exactly what these two things are. So what in the world is software engineering? It's ranked as one of the hottest disciplines and is a branch of computer science that involves writing and building code using different programming languages, testing and debugging code, and solving problems that arise in production to improve existing products using math, engineering analysis, and design principles. Software engineers are the creators behind the software and embedded systems and digital products such as Gmail, Google Chrome, Facebook, Android, iOS, Windows, just to name a few. As a software engineer, you will be able to work in essentially every industry, including but not limited to aerospace, automotive, food, medical, consumer electronics, defense, finance, and manufacturing. Now let's talk about biomedical engineering. What in the world is that? It's essentially a specialized discipline that seeks to create state-of-the-art healthcare products such as medical equipment, devices, and medicines through medical research and engineering for treating injuries and diseases. As a biomedical engineer, you will leverage knowledge spanning mechanical, electrical, materials engineering, and computer science, develop things like artificial limbs, biomaterials that are compatible with the human body, pacemakers, ECMO machines, 3D printed organs, and even drug delivery methods for treating cancers. Now that you have a high level understanding of these two disciplines, how does the curriculum for these two majors stack up against each other? As you probably can guess, both software and biomedical engineering students take the general set of engineering core courses during their freshman and sophomore year like math, which includes calculus one and two, multivariate calculus, differential equations, statistics, linear algebra, physics one, which is mechanics, and physics two, which is electricity and magnetism, as well as basic chemistry. Moving on to the common engineering courses between these two majors, you will have to take programming with a common language such as MATLAB or Python for solving engineering problems and an introduction design course intended to build a problem-solving mindset, computer skills, and familiarity with elements of engineering design. From this point on, the courses between these two majors will begin to diverge and become more specialized. Before we talk about the software engineering curriculum, it's worth mentioning that not many universities offer a software engineering degree for undergraduates, and computer science degrees are more widely available, but both are equally good for landing a software engineering job. So as a software engineering or CS major, you'll take computation structures that introduces the design of digital systems and computer architecture covering topics like combinational and sequential circuits and instruction set abstraction for programmable hardware which just means code that tells your computer CPU what to do. Then there's introduction to algorithms that teaches common algorithms and data structures used to solve computational problems within a programming context and various ways to measure algorithm performance. Next is fundamentals of programming covering programming and Python basics, algorithm techniques, data types, and recursion. You also have to take elements of software construction that teaches you how to write software that is safe from bugs, easy to understand, and can be easily changed. Some topics include invariance, design patterns for object-oriented programming, and concurrent as well as functional programming. 
Another course you will take is computer systems engineering covering computer software and hardware systems, including modular programming, operating systems, computer networks, naming conventions, and computer security and privacy. Then there is AI or intro to machine learning. This class will introduce representations, methods, and architectures used to build applications and to account for human intelligence from a computational point of view. You will learn how to use different learning methods like identification trees, neural networks, and support vector machines to solve problems. You will also likely have to take a more advanced algorithms class called design and analysis of algorithms that teaches how to create efficient algorithms covering topics like sorting, search trees, heaps, hashing, divide and conquer, dynamic programming, greedy algorithms, Bro, what are you talking about, man? Amortized analysis and graph algorithms. Another class that most programs will require is Intro to Electrical Engineering and Computer Science, where you apply both electrical engineering and computer science principles as a team to design an electromechanical system, such as a robot or internet connected wearable device, or perform in depth experiments to better understand cellular phone networks and other communication systems. So, as a biomedical engineering major, you will take a course related to the principles of molecular cell biology and biotechnology that introduces things like molecular building blocks, energetics, transport, metabolism, nucleic acids, gene expression, and genetics through lectures and labs. Moving on to your junior year, you will generally take a systems physiology course introducing topics like homeostasis and neural, muscle, respiratory, cardiovascular, renal, endocrine, gastrointestinal, and metabolic physiology. Another course you will take includes signals and controls that covers things like signals, systems, and feedback control with an emphasis on biomedical problems using analytical and computational methods, including linear time invariant systems and continuous and discrete time, Laplace and Fourier representations, transfer functions, pool zero analysis, stability, convolution, and sampling. This course will be followed by two courses called Biomedical Measurements 1 and 2. Biomedical Measurements 1 is designed to develop skills for collecting and analyzing biomedical measurements and learning proper usage of electronic equipment, including oscilloscopes, function generators, and DACs. Biomedical Measurements 2, on the other hand, will focus on labs designed to develop basic instrumentation and analysis skills for physiological and biological measurements. Emphasis will be placed on techniques involving light such as spectroscopy and microscopy and sound such as ultrasound. Like all engineering majors, biomedical engineering students will also propose and complete a senior design project with a small team in an area of biomedical engineering such as biomedical instrumentation, biosensors, tissue engineering, biological signal processing, biological modeling and simulation, clinical imaging, or informational systems. You will also have the choice to choose three or four biomedical engineering electives and several professional electives from a list of courses based on your personal interests. To give you a sense of what options will be available to you, this is a list of electives that my school offered. So the question to ask yourself is, are you more interested in developing and debugging code and algorithms for embedded systems in say a Tesla Model X or Boeing 777 and for digital products such as the Facebook app, operating systems, and computer software? Or are you more interested in the design, development, and testing of artificial limbs, life support machines for critically ill patients and even astronauts, organ implants, and diagnostic equipment using CAD and programming? So now that we have a good sense of the curriculum, let's compare the annual salaries and see what the current and future job outlook looks like for these two types of engineers. Let's begin with the salary breakdown for software engineers. We see that the median base salary is $110,140, while the lowest 10% and highest 10% made $65,200 and $170,100. Obviously, things like years of experience and work location will contribute to this salary gap. So someone with 10 plus years experience working at Google or Facebook in California or New York would probably be amongst the top 5% of earners. The number of jobs in 2020 was 1,847,900 and it's expected to see a whopping 22% increase in jobs between 2020 and 2030, which is just off the charts compared to the overall engineering field. Now moving on to biomedical engineering, we see that the median salary is $97,410 while the lowest 10% and highest 10% made $60,680 and $154,750 respectively. And the median salary 
salary of software engineers is about 15,000 more than that of biomedical engineers, which is no surprise. The total number of available biomedical engineering jobs in 2020 was 19,300, which is almost 100 times less than the available number of software engineering jobs, so the job security is not great for biomedical engineers. It's expected to see a 6% increase in job growth between 2020 and 2030, which is slightly below average compared to the overall engineering field of 7% and a lot less compared to software engineering. Software engineering tops the list both in terms of salary and job prospects by a long shot, and job security is something you will not have to worry about. Aside from the curriculum, salary, and job outlook, the last component we'll look at is prestige. For some people, it's all about the respect. Now the way I have to find prestige is how well known is the company you work at, and I assume that the larger the company, the more prestige it has. For all intents and purposes, we'll assume that the job title is not correlated with prestige. Consequently, I have evaluated prestige solely based on the total number of top 100 Fortune 500 companies that offer software and biomedical engineering jobs. There was a clear winner, which I'm sure many of you have already guessed, but here are the results. 93 out of the 100 companies offer software engineering jobs, including Walmart, Amazon, Apple, CVS Health, United Health Group, Berkshire Hathaway, Alphabet, McKesson, Amerisource Bergen, Costco, Cigna, AT&T, Microsoft, Cardinal Health, Chevron, Home Depot, Walgreens Boot Alliance, Marathon, Elevance Health, Kroger, Ford, Verizon, General Motors, Centene, Meta, Comcast, Philips 66, Valero Energy, Dell, Target, Fannie Mae, UPS, Lowe's, Bank of America, Johnson & Johnson, Archer Daniels Midland, FedEx, Humana, Wells Fargo, State Farm, Pfizer, Citigroup, PepsiCo, Intel, Procter & Gamble, General Electric, IBM, MetLife, Prudential, Albertsons, Disney, Energy Transfer, Lockheed Martin, Freddie Mac, Goldman Sachs, Raytheon Technologies, HP, Boeing, Morgan Stanley, HCA Healthcare, Abvi, Dow, Tesla, Allstate, AIG, Charter Communications, Cisco, Merck, New York Life Insurance, Caterpillar, Cisco Systems, TJ Maxx, Public Supermarkets, ConocoPhillips, Liberty Mutual Insurance Group, Progressive, Nationwide, Tyson Foods, Bristol Myers Squibb, Nike, Deer, American Express, Abbott Laboratories, Stone X Group, TIAA, Oracle, Thermo Fisher, Coca-Cola, Cola, General Dynamics, CHS, USAA, Northwestern Mutual, Nucor, Exelon, and Mass Mutual. By contrast, 10 out of the 100 companies offer biomedical engineering jobs, including Amazon, Apple, CVS Health, McKesson, Cardinal Health, Johnson & Johnson, Procter & Gamble, General Electric, Abbott Laboratories, and Thermo Fisher. All right, summarizing everything we talked about, software and biomedical engineering are neck and neck in terms of difficulty. What's common between these two majors is the math and engineering problem solving mindset. While software engineering classes focus on equipping students with effective engineering practices and knowledge of programming languages to build software products, computer games, and run network control systems, biomedical engineering classes are geared towards students wishing to gain expertise in engineering design and analysis of physiological measuring and diagnostic products, as well as quantitative analysis of the human body's normal and abnormal functions. Moving on to salary, software engineers have the potential of making more money compared to biomedical engineers where the median salary of software engineers is $110,140, while for biomedical engineers, it's $97,410. Obviously, if you work at one of the big tech companies, you will make a lot more, and these numbers are no longer accurate, but in general, they hold true for most companies. Finally, the job security and prestige level that comes with software engineering blows biomedical engineering out of the water, so definitely ask yourself if these two things matter to you. At the end of the day, the goal is to pick a major that you can build a career out of and enjoy doing for a lifetime. There's really no right or wrong answer when it comes to choosing software or biomedical engineering. You might be someone who already knows that your dream job is to work at Google as a software engineer to develop their latest and greatest Google Maps features. Or you want to work at Johnson & Johnson as a biomedical engineer to design hip implants and surgical instruments that saves millions of lives. I think knowing what you want already in college is fantastic, but rarely is this the case and more often times than not, you won't know exactly what you want until after working several full-time jobs or internships. 
If this applies to you, then I definitely recommend going with software engineering because it's so high in demand and the compensation, job security, job growth, and prestige are second to none. All right, as always, thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.